This is my 2005 Volvo XC90. It has 137,000 miles. I've had it for five months and it has been an absolute pleasure to own. What I'm going to do for you guys today is walk you through everything you need to know about the XC90s, major weak points, some common issues, preventative maintenances that you can abide by, and cosmetic changes that took place over the years. I've done copious amounts of research regarding these vehicles and will be consolidating all the web articles, the minor buyer's guides that are out there on Google into this brief video with all the information you need so that you can make an educated decision. Volvo made the XC90 from 2003 to 2014, and within that lifespan, it had a few minor cosmetic changes. The first cosmetic change would be the front bumpers. They were paint matched to the body of the car from 2007 on. In 2007, the taillights also saw a minor facelift where they became a single strip LED with the reverse light mounted right here. 2009 onward, the Volvo logo on the back was spaced out so that it's easier to see and easier to read. And then in 2010 and on, the fender and wheel well arches were paint matched to the body of the car. It's not uncommon to hear the XC90s being called the Swedish tanks. This is because they weigh between 4,300 to 4,600, depending on the engine choice you have. With that weight comes some positive driving characteristics and some negative maintenance issues. The positive thing about a car that weighs 4,300 pounds is that when you're driving at speeds in excess of 80 miles an hour, it doesn't budge. The drawback to a car that weighs 4,300 pounds is that it will chew through tires. A typical set of Michelins will probably net you anywhere between 50 to 55,000 miles. If you put those same Michelins on an XC90, you're only going to get about 30,000 miles. As we all know, Volvo's name is synonymous with safety, and the XC90 is no exception to that. This particular car is equipped with SIPS, which stands for Side Impact Protection System, WHIPS, Whiplash Impact Protection System, and ROPS, Rollover Protection System. It was, at its time, state-of-the-art and one of the first vehicles to feature these safety features. You can read more about them in the description below. I've provided links to articles that will give you more detailed information about how these safety features work. So the Volvo XC90 came with some really cool features for parents uh, like myself. First one is that the middle seat doubles as a booster seat. It's very easy to do. There's a handle right here. You pull it and you push and you don't have to carry a booster. The next really cool feature is that this armrest for the front passenger and driver is removable and lets the middle passenger have space to stretch their legs. This is huge if you carry a lot of people in your car. Unfortunately, the rear seats do not recline. They only move forward and back. middle row does fold flat and on some XC90s you also had the option for a third row. To get into the third row you pull this handle, move the seat forward, lift the seat, pull the cushion out and climb in. Don't forget the headrest. Now, this third row is pretty cramped. I am 5'7", and if I move the seat back, my feet are underneath the seat. I am sitting in a pretty cramped position, but it's not extremely uncomfortable. I could probably sit like this for about an hour max. In order to put the third row back, you got to pull this handle push this and pull it down. 
as you can see, the cargo area on the XC90 is extremely spacious when you have the third row folded down. If you have it up, it's only as big as this mat right here, which can still accommodate some groceries, a small stroller, among other things you might want to pack. The tailgate is a two-part bottom and then top. The XC90 has its fair share of some common issues that you should know about. Luckily for us though, the Volvo computer will automatically display them on the left hand side of the instrument cluster upon startup. To cycle through those, you just want to press this button right here. And that's all I have is the park assist. Some of these common issues are the parking sensors in the rear going bad, which will trigger a park assist service required. The way to get to that is the rear bumper has to be removed and each individual sensor has to be replaced or tested and replace the ones that have failed. You may also get a alarm system service required. What this is, is the alarm module in the Volvo is located behind the passenger side uh, wheel arch and it's covered by a wheel well mud cover that's riveted into the fender which is a pain to undo and then re-rivet. The module itself can cost anywhere between $150 for a used one to $400 for a new one. The only way to get rid of that light is to replace that module. If there's a brake assist service required message on the Volvo, it's most likely the brake pedal position sensor, which with time and mileage will wear out and need to be replaced. It's located right below the master cylinder and it costs $45 for a generic or $85 for an OEM from uh, FCP Euro. Lastly, the bane of the Volvo community is the anti-skid service required message. On all-wheel drive or front-wheel drive Volvos, the anti-skid message can illuminate and it can be a number of things from the brake pedal position sensor. Uh, if that's faulty, it will also throw an anti-skid code your Haldex pump, which is what triggers your all-wheel drive mechanism. It's located in the rear, right by your rear differential. To a couple of other things, the best thing to do is plug in the Volvo Vita software and run the codes and see what's wrong before you start throwing money at it. It's not the end of the world. It is an issue that is that can be repaired and it should not scare you off from buying one of these XC90s. Moving on to some quality of life issues. I have them written down. I'm going to walk you through them. Uh, the first one is the sunroof leaking. If your Volvo XC90 is equipped with a sunroof, you will at some point experience leaking from the A-pillars. And what it'll do is it'll stain and peel your A-pillar fabric. This is a very easy fix. I'm uploading a video on that. All you have to do is undo the, uh, the handle pull off this A-pillar trim and reconnect your, uh, your drain hose. There's a little grommet at the bottom of the A-pillar that gets clogged and or comes off of the, the drain hose and that will cause you leaking. The, the climate control lights on the climate control module can go out and what that'll cause is a, a dim climate control module. You can't really read the temperatures at night door lock actuators can fail. In the instance of this XC90, the driver's side rear door will only unlock from the key, but will lock from uh, any, any other button you touch. That's an issue. To replace, it is a bit of a hassle because these doors are so big and heavy. Uh, I'm just living with it for now. The rear seats do not recline. They are comfortable, but the lack of reclining makes it kind of annoying to really relax inside the vehicle. The steering wheel logos, they peel and you can't fix them. There was a website that offered uh, replacement logos. However, Volvo uh, filed a cease and desist against the person organizing that. And so it is no more. The only way to replace this is to replace the airbag unit. If the Volvo you're test driving has a clanky front end or rear end, it's most likely the sway bar links. They do tend to fail and they will cause that long before your shocks and springs do. So don't freak out, just get that looked at by a mechanic and have it replaced or replace it yourself. They're fairly inexpensive, about $80 for the front and rear sets. 
Moving on under the hood, Volvo offered the XC90s in either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and either of these drive configurations could be combined with any of the four engine options. You had the 2.5 inline five-cylinder turbo, which is what you see here, a 3.0 inline six twin turbo three-liter engine, a 3.2-liter naturally aspirated V6, and a 4.4-liter naturally aspirated V8. The 2.5 inline five-cylinder is essentially a bulletproof motor along with the ASIN transmission that it's offered with. It has a timing belt that needs to be replaced every 80 to 90,000 miles. All the other engines have timing chains. The 3.0 inline six-cylinder engine had a very weak transmission and a lot of the times while you're searching for these you'll find them for sale for very cheap with a slipping or completely non-operational transmission. The 3.2 liter V6 was a very good option. They ran it all the way until 2014 and it's a solid motor. The only thing you have to look out for is that it may burn oil from time to time. So just uh, keep a lookout on your oil level. Lastly, the 4.4 liter V8 had counterbalance issues that would essentially grenade the engine and you would need a, a new factory replacement. This issue was prevalent from 2006 to 2008. You're safe buying a 2008, but safer buying a 2009 and on. Uh, other than that, these cars are very reliable and safe to see drive into the 200 or 300,000 mile range. And that's about it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing a lot more videos on this car, all the other cars I've done videos on in the past, and any other videos that you might want me to do, just leave them in the comments below.